In this video, we're going to carry on creating our CNC machined intake housing for a Honda K-Series. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with our three-axis CNC intake. Now, remember that we've already taken a look at doing this with off-the-shelf D-shaped plenum parts. We've also taken a look at doing it with surfaces and forms. And now we want to talk about doing it with CNC in mind. So we've already got our CNC plenum component we're going to activate. And of course, you can go to the description of the video and download the data set yourself. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating the plenum plate and then building out the rest of the plenum. This is probably going to be multiple pieces, but we're going to try to keep three axis CNC in mind. Now, remember, I don't think anybody's gonna be building this intake because it's gonna be a massive piece of billet in order to do this, but we still want to explore the idea. So in this DNC plenum, I'm gonna turn on the other runners and notice that I've got a couple of other pieces in this design. This is just kind of a basic idea, not really what we're going to use, but just something that's in here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take these three bodies, I'm gonna right click and remove them. We want to start fresh and note that we do still have our throttle body plate in here. So when we start fresh, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to create a sketch on one of these faces. I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to use P on the keyboard to project the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing front and rear. The reason I want to do this is because I want to bring the references in so that I can build out the plenum plate using the slot tool. We're going to do a center to center slot going from the end of the front runner to the end of the back runner and building out this plenum plate. I'm going to make this 78 millimeters and this is going to give us a great starting point to build out the rest of the intake. Now remember you can build this to be welded together or bolted together. Now bolting together has its own challenges. You need a thick enough material that it's rigid enough so that you don't need a million bolts to hold the thing together. So again, it's just going to add up to weight and also cost for raw material. So now that we have the sketch, let's go ahead and finish the sketch and just extrude it. From here, because we didn't select these inside pieces, notice that we don't have these profiles. That's okay for now, but if we want to fix that, we can always just fix the sketch profile. This is going to be a new body, so I'm not going to worry about it for right now. And I am going to control select these other areas and notice that it is giving me an issue because it's including too much material. So because of that, I think I'm going to go ahead and fix the sketch now. What I want to do is I want to find the edges that I don't need in this case that and I'm going to hit X to turn that into construction. I don't really need to worry about the inside. I only want to extrude to here. Now, you can also box select everything inside and make sure that all of it is construction. And then we can rotate this around and just project the edges we need. So P on the keyboard. And instead of using the body option for my selection filter, I'm just gonna work my way around. Also note that we do have this in another sketch because we created the runners. We could just pull that information directly from the other sketch. Because we have projection link turned on, if that other sketch happens to change, this is gonna update as well. So just work your way around making all these selections, noting that it might already exist if we selected the entire body, we're gonna say okay. And then once again, I wanna select one of these edges and then just make sure that they are not going to be used. So I'm gonna turn them into construction. What we wanna see is that when we select, we don't have this funny little jog right here. We want it to go all the way in. So this edge needs to be construction. And again, X on the keyboard will let you do that. So we'll finish the sketch. We're gonna hit E to extrude. And now it's a very easy selection. So we need to determine how thick this plate's gonna be. Now 10 millimeters is probably good. I wanna make sure that I don't join it. It's gonna be a new body for right now. And this is going to be, again, the basis for where we either bolt or weld the rest of the design on. Now, we could just make this relatively simple and just create a log, but we want to go a little bit fancier than that. We want to make sure that we have a pretty unique design. So what I want to do is I need to figure out how to transition from this arc over to this, but I also need to figure out how to make this thing in 3D so that we can manufacture it. What I want to do is I want to take a construction plane 
that is directly between, which we already created for the split for our runners, and I'm going to start a new sketch. From here, I want to use Create, Project Include, and Intersect, and I want to intersect with this plenum body. So this body is going to be, again, the basis for the rest of the design. And I'm going to start by creating a line that comes off of this. And after it goes out about 35 millimeters, I'm going to hold down the left mouse button over the last vertex and start to create an arc. Now from here, I want to arc it so that we start to taper forward. We're going to maintain tangency. And we're going to say OK for now. Now the reason I want to do that is because now I can pull this around. I've got tangency on this arc. I can manipulate it. I can change the shape. But really what I want to do is I want to figure out where this is going to hit my throttle body plate. Now we can build the throttle body plate into this design. It can be an extra piece. It can also taper back down to it. So we don't necessarily have to stick with a very strict requirement of blending back into that. So from here, I think I'm happy with that shape. I'm going to draw a line forward. And for right now, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not really sure what is going to happen from here, but I'm going to start and create a straight line. And then again, I'm going to make an arc and I'm going to come out horizontally. I want to make sure that we have tangency between these two edges. And I want to make sure that this vertex and this vertex are vertical with each other. So I'll select both and use my vertical constraint. I am going to add one more line in here. This vertical line, I then want to turn into construction using X on the keyboard. Last thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that this is a smooth transition. So I'm going to put a large arc there and then right click and go to OK. So now essentially what we're doing is we can either use these to cut a solid or we can use these to build out the solid. So a couple different ways that we can do it. If we want to use this to build out the solid, then this really needs to be a line that we can use and not construction. And then we're going to take a line and go from this endpoint to this endpoint so we create a complete closed profile. What we can do is we can use the intersect method that allows us to keep only the intersecting bodies between the two. So let's give that a shot and see what, what this is going to look like. Now, full disclosure, I haven't actually built this thing or in 3D before. So we're kind of going through it the first time together. What I want to do is I'm going to show this other sketch and I'm going to extrude that. And I want to select all the profiles this time. I want the inside, but notice it's not allowing me to grab it because what it's doing is it's actually extruding that face. So I need to hide that body and then I need to actually select the sketch profile and all of the inside pieces as well. If you have any of these little segments, you want to make sure to select them. And once we have those selected, I'm just going to pull this out and I'm going to create this as a new body as well. Once again, we still have that plenum plate back there. We'll deal with that in just a second, but I'm going to hide it for now. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to extrude this. I'm going to bring this one up. I'm just going to simply say it's symmetric on both sides and we want to create an intersect. So I can determine what I want to intersect this with. In this case, it's that extrude for the CNC plenum. Now, you'll notice that it didn't come all the way out here, and that's something that we do need to think about or deal with. If we want it to come out that far, then we need to modify or adjust the original shape. But you can see this gave us a pretty interesting plenum shape. It might not necessarily be exactly what I'm looking for, but it does have a unique shape to it. To play around with this, let's go ahead and try to add a fillet to this corner and just see what it looks like. So obviously it gets to a certain point and we can no longer create that fillet. So while this looks okay, I'm not really too happy with the shape. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to delete that last extrude. And I want to think about ways in which we can make this look a little bit better. So in order to do that, I'm going to show the sketch from the top. And I want to use this sketch, and I want to think about using this sketch to trim this shape. Now, instead of using this arc right here, what I'm going to do is just take this straight line, and I'm going to allow it to use it as a split. I'm going to turn off Extend Split Tools for now. I'm going to select this Extrude to Split, and I'm going to select this line and just see what happens. So when we do that, this should essentially give us the same thing that we just got with Intersect. 
when we hide this extra solid body here, you can see that it looks relatively the same. So that's not giving us the result that we want. So what I want to do is I want to create another sketch on that plane. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to project this edge. So P on the keyboard, I'm going to project that and project this. And then I'm going to use my line tool to go from here and just extend it out so that it's collinear or parallel. So we'll select collinear and just make sure that those run together and finish the sketch. Now what we can do is we can use that as a split, bodies to split, split tool. We want to make sure that we select it all. And then we can take a look at this piece. I'm going to right click and remove it. So now that looks a little bit better, but I'm still not super convinced that this is the right choice. So there's one more thing that I want to do here. I want to get rid of this fillet. So if I select it and hit delete, it's not able to get rid of it. So the best way that we can do this is go back to the sketch and add to it, or we can make some adjustments to the way in which we remove it. So probably the easiest option is to just add to it. So what I want to do is I want to create a sketch on this face. And I'm going to use my line tool to just bring this box out towards the throttle body and then come back over. I'm going to make sure that this line is horizontal. And for right now, I don't really care where that is in space. I'm just going to leave it as, as it is. And I want to bring this all the way up to the top. Instead of distance, I'm going to say to object and take it to this flat and join them together. So now this gives me a little bit more to work with because now I can take care of the back side of this. I can blend it. I can round it off. So let's try to add a fillet now. I want to go ahead and start to create a fillet. Let's go ahead and rotate this around. So one thing you'll notice that this doesn't look like a normal fillet, and that's because this tangency weight was dropped. I'm going to go ahead and increase that to one. I want to change this to curvature continuous. Curvature continuous is going to give me a slightly different result. I want to take it close to center. That yeah, looks all right. And we're going to say OK. So this is essentially a log manifold. It's just a little bit different style. So as we're looking at this, this corner is not ideal. We need to get rid of it. So we can either take the chamfer tool and we can just sort of hack it off like this. And that might be a good solution. Or we can get a little bit more creative and actually remove some material there. I think I'm going to leave it like this. And then I'm going to come back with a fillet and simply round these two corners off. Once I've rounded those off, I then want to use fillet. And I'm just going to round this off as well, just to give it a little bit more polished look. Now, for the throttle body, this is where things are going to get a little bit interesting. We want to have the same size throttle body, but obviously this manifold isn't quite large enough. So we can think about the original extrudes that we created and the way in which this design was created, and we can make it a little bit taller. So right now we took it directly from that plate, but instead of just extruding that out, what we could do is we could edit this feature and we could taper it out. So if we go say 10 degrees, it's gonna make it larger, and then we have to go back and modify some things like the sketch used for the split. So we're going to work our way back. And then we're going to take a look at the sketch that we used for the split. So in this case, the sketch up front doesn't go all the way through at 10 degrees. So we just simply need to extend it out a little bit. Now we should be able to rebuild the split. I'm going to go ahead, right click and edit that feature. We're going to allow it to extend. And then the remove, we just need to make sure that it's removing the right body. This sketch should be OK. However, extruding that out so that it goes at 10 degrees is going to be a little bit tricky. So when we extrude this, it's just going to go straight, and it's not going to give us that 10 degree taper. If we were to change this and extrude this one out at 10 degrees, it's going to go 10 degrees in both directions. And that might be OK. It might also not produce the best result. So what I want to do is I want to think about where this is hitting that fillet and how this is going to affect the overall design. Fusion is really good about deleting and patching geometry. So I'm going to rotate this around. I'm going to scroll in and find that little face there and hit delete and allow it to patch it. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So 
using direct modeling helps us clean the model up a little bit and not have to spend the extra time fiddling with all those little details. The next thing that we want to do is we want the end of this to be flat. So we can add all these fillets and we can round everything off. We can put the throttle body at that angle, or we can come back and we can flatten the end off. I kind of like it at a little bit of an angle. So what I want to do is I want to copy this plate. So inside of the TB plate, I'm going to go into this body and I'm going to copy it. So using control C on the keyboard and then inside of my plenum, I'm going to paste it. From here, I'm going to just simply move it outward. So I'm going to view it from the top and just pull it out. I'm going to say OK, go back to the TV plate component and hide it. From here, I'm going to go to modify and align, select the back face of that and the front face of this. And you can see it's not letting me select this because it's not actually flat. So what this is telling me is that I don't have a valid selection here for align to work. I might need to go point to point. So one thing that we can do is we can change this to bodies because both of these are bodies inside of the same component and this should work just fine. So that looks okay. Let's view it from the left. So now we have that plate included. We can move it around if we wish. So I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard. I'm gonna move bodies. I'm gonna select the upper edge here and that way I can move it along its axis and say okay. I'm not gonna worry about the bolt positions just yet because this is still one massive solid body and I need to make it a thin wall body. So the first thing that I need to do is turn this into a shell. So this plenum right here, we're going to select shell and then we're gonna give it five millimeters thickness. Say okay. And we're gonna take a quick look at this with inspect to take a look at the section view. You have to keep in mind when you're doing a shell like this, you have to think about the radius of the fillets that you used. Sometimes if you use too small of a fillet, you'll have a problem. So you can see here, we've got a nice inside shape. Everything looks pretty good. We still need to pop the holes in it for those, but that's okay. And we're gonna just cancel out of that section view. Now, remember we did have that original plate that we were gonna use, that, that's kind of gone in the trash at this point. So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna remove it for this example. The next thing that we need to do now that we actually have it, we, we need to cut the holes in for the runners and then we need to split it in half so we can machine both sides and weld it together. So at this point, we do have some sketches that actually include the plenum openings. We just need to find them. I'm gonna take all the runners, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hide them. And I actually don't need to see the head plate either. So that head flange that we see here, that one can be hidden for now. And then we want to extrude the holes in the plenum. I do wanna show one of the runners just to make sure we don't pop too big of a hole in. And you can see that those, uh, those are actually going to be too large. It's gonna have the runner go all the way in, which is not exactly what we want. So we just need to find the sketch that we used to make those runners. And you can see this one here. We can take that inside shape. Let's go ahead and view it from the back. We can take that and control select these and we can use extrude. I'm gonna hide the runner body and we wanna extrude this all the way in to the inside of the plenum. One way that we can do that is we can go up to object and I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button and then I wanna select the inside face. So that's gonna be relatively straightforward. And then we can create a rectangular pattern of that feature. So we'll select feature, select the extrude. We'll select the direction. In this case, I'm gonna use X just in case any of these edges are tapered. We want four at 86 millimeter spacing. So we're gonna do spacing and set this to 86 and okay. Now each of the runners should perfectly line up. We can use our construction plane to split the body in half. So this is our body to split. And now we have an upper and a lower portion of the plenum. So I'm gonna call this upper plenum and I'll call this one lower plenum. So again, this is a fairly simple example. We are looking at sort of splitting everything in half so it's easier to machine because obviously we can't machine inside of this thing. We're gonna to have to split it up into different sizes and machining it from the port into here is not gonna be a valid option. If we had 
the plate where we mounted to the runners, we could potentially get inside there, but it's gonna take some extremely long tools. This is a much shallower section for us to machine, and it gives us the ability to weld it together after the fact. The other thing we need to do is we need to pop the hole in the plenum for the throttle body. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start a sketch here, and this is gonna automatically bring in all of my references. So now I have the center that I can cut the hole in, and then I have the bolt hole locations. However, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that each of those has the applicable material on the inside. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude this all the way in. I'm just gonna say, okay. And then I need to think about those bolt holes. Now, we can't just put the bolt holes here because that's not gonna give us enough material. So we need to have a boss or something on the inside. And obviously we need to be able to machine underneath it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a new sketch, but this time I'm gonna start the sketch on the inside face. So for this, I'm gonna hide the lower plenum and I'm gonna focus just on the upper for this example. So on the inside face, we're gonna create a sketch. I'm gonna rotate this thing around and we're gonna project these bolt holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select them both, hit P on the keyboard to project them on the inside. So now that we have those, you're gonna to have to bear, me, bear with me with this view. I'm gonna use slice, I'm gonna view it from the right, and then we're gonna use our circle tool, C on the keyboard, to create a boss. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And what we wanna make sure that we have is a vertical line, so that way we can machine this. And we also wanna make sure that we have a horizontal line here because we don't wanna create any situation where we can't machine inside there. So this section is essentially going to be inside of the housing. And what we can do is we can just create an arc to finish that off that we know is inside of the housing. I know that this isn't really a precise way to do it, but sometimes when we're dealing with these complex shapes, you have to think about what's the best way to make this geometry. And sometimes it's kind of doing it this way. Uh, we don't really need to worry too much about this one, but I am still going to put a horizontal line there. And I wanna give these some dimensions. So let's make that 18 millimeters, make sure this line and this line are tangent. And I wanna make sure that this has tangency as well, not just horizontal. And we'll give this one the same 18 millimeters. So I'll just select that and say, okay. So everything here looks okay. I know this is kind of messy on the inside. These lines aren't really needed, just these straight lines here, but we needed a closed profile. So let's finish the sketch. And let's extrude these out. So E on the keyboard once again, select all these regions, and make sure that we grab all of that and these straight sections as well. This can be hard, especially when you've got perspective turned on. And I'm gonna view this from the bottom. Let's go ahead. And we wanna just pull these out and they're gonna be new bodies. We can join them together. And you'll notice the first problem that happens. So the first problem that happens is these new bodies aren't really going to work. And that they're not gonna work because essentially what we're doing is we're creating this opening in the plenum and then we've got all this stuff down here that we can't machine. So one of the better ways that we can do this is to change the thickness at this plate. So I'm gonna cancel all of that. I know it's kind of a pain, but we're gonna cancel all of that. Cancel that last sketch and think about adding material to the front. So when we look at this, I'm gonna select it and look normal to it. When we look at this, everything here is sort of fitting within this profile. Obviously we could go back and we could change the extrude, we could make things a little bit bigger, but for the most part, everything is fitting within this profile. So all we really need to do, or we really need to think about is making sure that we've got these blind holes on the outside. So this, because of these fillets is a little tricky, um, just because of the size and location of these holes. It's just not quite lining up how I would expect it to or want it to. So with that, what I'm gonna do is make some modifications. This chamfer right here, uh, instead of being 30 millimeters, I'm gonna make it 20. And what that does is it makes the size of that face a little bit bigger. It's gonna have to rebuild everything, the shell and all the other commands that we did. It's gonna rebuild all of those. And now let's go ahead and take a look at this one more time, see if that bought us anything. Okay, so that bought us a little bit. This fillet right here is this one here. Let's go ahead and edit this. And instead of that being 10 millimeters, let's try to make it six. I want it a little bit bigger than the um, 
the inside, this is probably gonna produce an issue with the shell, but let's go ahead and just try it at six millimeters and see what we get on the inside of the design. So it appears to work. Let's hide the upper plenum. You can see it left a pretty tight transition. Now, if I was actually going to machine this, I'd probably just take a bullnose mill into that corner. I don't think it really needs to be very round, but that looks okay. But this bought us a little bit more real estate on the front. So now we can add some thickness, add some material. And with that material, what we can do is, is we can incorporate those bolts. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use press pull. I'm going to select these faces and I'm going to just begin pulling them out. So let's cancel that selection. It's thinking really hard about trying to, trying to do this. I think part of the problem is I've got that sketch still displayed. So I'm going to hide that for now, but I want to select this face. I'm going to say new offset and I'm going to pull this out. So you can see what it's doing is it's moving that face and while it's moving the face, it's making it thicker. So if I hold down control, I can do this on the bottom as well and give myself just a little bit more real estate. So that way I can have a blind hole. I'm gonna take this out a bit further. I'm gonna make that whole front uh, 10 millimeters thick. And then if I take a look at the throttle body sketch, it's now inside of that face, which is okay. But what I wanna do is use extrude and I want to extrude these holes. Now, I know in reality, we need to think about the length of the screw and all that kind of stuff, but really I should be able to go 10 millimeters back now without ever going through the housing. Let's go ahead and let's go 15 and see how far that gets us. It looks like 15 just barely pops through. So we're gonna do minus 12 and call it a day. Now, you'll notice they didn't come all the way through the front. So I do need to edit that feature. And let's go ahead and do two sides. And the other side, we're just gonna do negative five, so it pops all the way out, and hide that sketch. As I said, this, um, I did not pre-model this, so we're kind of going through it together at the same time. The last thing that I would want to do for a design like this is I would want to chamfer this edge so that when I weld it, there's good penetration. So I'm gonna chamfer this edge here and this edge and all of these. And we know that it's five millimeters thick. So I'm gonna do a two millimeter chamfer and I'm gonna do the same thing to the upper plenum as well. So I'm gonna go into modify chamfer. We're gonna grab all these edges and just do a two millimeter chamfer all the way around. So once again, the reason that we're doing that is so that we have a nice spot that we can weld and that would give us good penetration and we can sort of bury the weld into there. And we've got plenty of wall thickness there and uh, it's gonna give us just a good result. Now, as, as I mentioned, this is, nobody's ever gonna really make this. Um, at least I, I, can't, I can't imagine that somebody would make this, but this is sort of the, the basis or the foundation of one way that we can make a design like this, right? There's, there's plenty of different ways. Um, this is just another iteration of an intake manifold. This one, again, kind of DIY, three axis, but it's not a very efficient way to, to do something like this. So next, what I plan to do is I plan to look at functionality where we can actually machine into ports. So instead of just doing straight runners here, we're actually going to make use of having multi-axis. So we're going to loft and flare out the runners. We're going to make them a bit shorter and we're going to make a much more intricate plenum, something that is going to take a little bit more time than just 20 or 30 minutes. But once again, this is kind of a base design, something that you can do and, and kind of play around with shapes. Think about ways in which you can model something uh, because there are plenty of different ways. Again, extruding out things and just saving the intersection between them adding the rounds and fillets. We've already explored doing this with lofts and forms and all the different ways that, that we can go about this. So there are plenty of different ways that you can go about creating something like this. And again, in the next video, we're gonna start talking about multi-axis and kind of removing the restrictions of, of thinking about things in a top and bottom orientation. So the multi-axis one is where we're gonna get into really unique designs. We're gonna look at, again, lofting or forming the intake ports and kind of go a little bit crazy. 
But at this point, this is kind of as far as we're going to take the three axis route. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. If anybody's interested in making something like this and you actually want to take the time to, to walk through an intake, like I said, I wouldn't be building this one. If I'm going to do it, I would likely either go the five axis route or the DIY route. So th this is kind of an in-between that's really expensive, but with not a ton of benefits. Um, and of course, there are plenty of ways that you could expand on this or you could change the way in which it's modeled, the way in which it's put together. Instead of welding, it could be bolting together and so on. But again, because I don't think a lot of people are going to be doing this, I don't want to focus a ton of attention on it. So we're going to get into that when we get into the real unique kind of uh, crazy designs where you can do carbon fiber plenums or you can, um, you know, you can get into making your own runners out of unique materials. But that's the end of this one. So again, if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.